Hey, what is up, everybody? I am here to give you my TNA Impact Wrestling Slammiversary 2015 review. Um, I haven't reviewed a TNA pay-per-view in a while. I think the last one I reviewed was TNA Bound for Glory 2014 be because that was the last TNA pay-per-view I watched because, one, I stopped watching the product, you know, from time to time. And another reason is because... Um, there hasn't been a pay-per-view since TNA Bound for Glory, so this is like the foot. Um, it's a nice change up to review a TNA pay-per-view again. You know, it's not. Um, I mean, it's not going to be a frequent thing because they don't have them that often. But it's nice to review TNA pay-per-views. You know. Um, so let me just uh, jump right into this pay-per-view. Before I talk about the pay-per-view, uh, I just kind of want to mention some things. Um, the thing that made this pay-per-view. Um, didn't really feel like a pay-per-view. One of the main reasons is because, one, it wasn't hyped like a TNA pay-per-view. I didn't really feel like, um, until, um, this past TNA, um, you know, this past week, Wednesday, I felt like that they, uh, didn't really hype up the show. They would mention it, but they didn't really hype up any matches. They didn't really, uh, hype up, like, th this show, like, it was a big deal. So I didn't really feel like, you know, that they really hi hyped um, anybody enough to go watch this pay-per-view um, and another reason why this didn't feel like a TNA pay-per-view is because of the uh, set the put presentation of the uh, pay-per-view um, now this is important when it comes to pay-per-views because you want to make your set look different than a TV show um, you know because this is, feels like a pay-per-view and those set just pretty much look like a regular world um, TNA set just with the word Slammiversary written on it. That's really what it felt like to me. And that was kind of, that's what me, made it feel like, like I was just watching another, um, Impact except, uh, three hours longer. So that was, um, you know, that. Um, so that's how I kind of feel. Um, and it's probably not their fault because they probably don't have maybe enough budget in to kind of make a set. Um. But that's kind of how I thought. I felt like that they didn't really have, um, the set wasn't, didn't look as good. Um, but other than that, that's all I really have to say there. So let me just kind of talk about the show itself now. Um, so we had the Pope D'Angelo Gennaro, Josh Matthews, and Mike Tenay on commentary for this show. Um, I, uh, thought this was a fine group. I actually enjoyed them on commentary a lot. They did a good job. Uh, Mike Tenay, I was happy he had some sort of presence on this show because this is the 13th anniversary of TNA. And um, I feel like Mike Tenay has been there since pretty much day one, so I feel like he should have been on this in, this show in some capacity. So I'm happy that uh, he was on commentary for the show. And I kind of miss him on commentary. The TNA doesn't actually feel the same nowadays without Mike Tenay on commentary, so it feels a little weird. Um... So, um, I, uh, think this was the first match on the show. They said it was, but this was probably the first thing that had happened on this show. Um, but I, mi I missed three minutes of it. It was only three minutes, but there could have been something big that happened. So if there was, let me know in the comments. I just kind of forgot about it, so I put it on three minutes too late. Um, the first match was DJ Z versus Manic versus T. Grey Uno. For, in an elimination match for the uh, X Division Championship, and Tigre Uno was actually defending the championship here. Um, and um, I uh, forgot to mention this week when T Tigre Uno won the title that they have the X Division Championship is new now. Um, it's now green instead of blue. Um, I, I like it just because I like the color green, but yeah, I think it looks like fine. It doesn't really feel that different to me, but. You know, I just figured I'd bring it up. That's why I forgot to mention it because it didn't look that different. But this match was awesome. I thought this was some good shit. Um, the reason why I thought this was good is because it was a nice way to open up the show with some nice X Division high flying action. I thought this was a great way to open the show. Got a good enough a time, amount of time. Um, so I thought this was pretty good. Uh, the spots in the match. Um, DJ Z hits a uh, Hurricanrana on Manic, and then um, and I like DJ Z as a face now too. I think he's been doing a pretty good job with that. Um, 
feel like he should get rid of the DJZ character and just go back to being Zima Ion, but, you know. Um, and then uh, Tigre Uno dives, um, and it's like a corkscrew, um, high cross body on the, bo on the both guys. And then Manic dominates the match for a while. He dominates Tigre Uno. Um, and he just kind of hits the, the, you know, like a body slam. And then he just pretty much just dominate gets the heat on uh, Tigre Uno and keeps DJZ out of the match. One spot that he did was he did like a missile drop kick to Tigre, to uh, DJZ on the outside, which I liked. Um, and then eventually Tigre Uno and uh, DJZ just both double team uh, Manic. And they both um, take each other out. Um, Tigre Uno dives on uh, Manic on the outside. And then uh, DJZ dives off the turnbuckle and does a uh, Cena and Senton right onto Tigre Uno, which looked really sick. He actually ends up hitting the guardrail. Um, and um, then they do another spot where they do the electric chair reverse suplex move, um, which looked really cool. And then... Um, what else happens next? Uh, eventually, um, Tigre Uno uh, hits the uh, corkscrew moonsault. Well, you no, know, the sp split legged moonsault on to Manic and eliminates him. No, on to DJZ and eliminates him. Then it's down to Manic and Tigre Uno. Um, and um, really good match. Uh, Manic hits his finish on to Tigre Uno. He hits the uh, knees, the knees to the chest on him. And then he hits a, well, for, he originally went for the frog splash earlier, but Tigre Uno got the knees up and tried to roll him up, and Manic kicked out. But then he hits the frog splash again, and Tigre Uno kicked out. Then uh, Manic takes down, um, hits a drop kick on, um, no, Tigre Uno hits a drop kick on, on, on Tenetsuguri on to Manic, and then hits a quick swoon moonsault on Manic and eliminates him. And Tigre Uno wins the match and uh, retains the X Division Championship. Um... I, like I said, really good match. I thought it was a really nice way to open the show. Um, so it was really good stuff. And I'm happy Tigre Uno went over. It makes sense, too, because he just won the championship. You don't want to take it off him this fast. And I feel like he can do some good things with the X Division Championship. Um, have some really good high-profile high matches with it. Then uh, Bobby E gets interviewed, and he, put, and, uh, he talks about how um, he's normally literally you know, the way he is, um, like, you know, pretty much the Jersey Shore ripoff, but tonight you're going to see a different side of RBE after what Jesse Garters did to me, he took away le my wrestling, and I love wrestling, it was what it was, I don't really like RBE that much, so, um, then we got Jesse Garters versus RBE, I did like the hype video they played for this match, showing them together as a tag team, winning the tag team championship, so I thought that was cool. Uh, Jesse Garters comes out, he comes out very Chris masters -ish. he has the robe, and he does the poses like Chris Masters, so he's pretty much being a Chris Masters ripoff, uh, which I'm not enjoying, but I think he can play it off pretty well, I mean, um, and he cuts a promo, pretty much putting down Robbie E, he talks about how he's the man, and uh, we get the match, Robbie E beats the crap out of him. Um, for a while, and then he hits a dive right on to Jesse, and then Jesse throws him into the steel steps, um, dominates him for a while, hits the Gorilla Plus on him, um, and then uh, Robbie E makes a comeback, and then Jesse, and they both hit clotheslines on each other, and Robbie E wins with a reverse DDT. The match was fine. I think the match went a little too long, though. I don't think it needed to be as long as it was, but the match was fine. And I think Jesse Garter should have gone over because I feel like they could do more with him than Robbie E. But we're going to have to wait and see with that. Um, then Matt Hardy gets interviewed. And he talks about how um, everyone's always looked at him like, like as a tag team wrestler. and But not tonight. Tonight he's going to cl climb the ladder and become the new global... Four, no. Become the new Ken of the Mountain champion. And I'll explain that in a second. Um... I actually like Matt Hardy's promo here. It was solid. Um, then we get Bram versus Matt Morgan. And Matt Morgan comes out. He cuts a promo. And the microphones, by the way, tonight, um, instead of saying Impact Wrestling on him, they said TNA Wrestling on him, which I thought was actually kind of unique. A little weird, but unique. So 
I thought that was cool because they have been, they usually like to call it TNA Impact Wrestling now, but they actually said, it actually said TNA Wrestling on it, which I thought was cool. Um, and, uh, Matt Morgan says that he, um, loves TNA. This has been his home for years now. And he says that he didn't just come back, the fans didn't come back to see him wrestle, they came back to see him fight. So he challenges Bram to a street fight, and I guess Bram accepts because he gets in the win and fights him. And Mac Morgan beats the crap out of him for a while. Then Bram goes under the win, pulls out the turnbuckle tool, hits Matt Morgan with him, hits him off the head with it. And then um, he uh, hits him with a trash can, chair, trash can lid. Then um, he uh, puts all that stuff in the ring. Gets Matt Morgan in the win, and Matt Morgan um, hits a carbon footprint on him. No, hits his, hits his comeback, and he goes for the choke slam. Bram counters um, and, and hits him with the uh, trash can. And Matt Morgan, and uh, what happens next? Matt he Bram, Bram tries to hit him with the trash can again. He hits a carbon footprint while he's holding the trash can, and then uh, Bram rolls outside the win. Matt Morgan gets him back inside the win. Um, hits all his moves on him again. Hits a choke slam on him on the chair. Um, then Bram somehow takes down Matt Morgan. I don't remember how. Um, and uh, he's trying to find some sort of weapon. And I think it was all that he was looking for was like a steel chair. But there was like a steel chair in the wind. So that was stupid. Yeah, that, that, that took him like two minutes to do. So that was kind of stupid. I don't know if that was legit or not. But whatever. Um... Then Matt and then uh, Matt Morgan choke slams him on the chair, and then Bram hits the brighter side of suffering on the chair for the win. Uh, this match was really boring. I didn't really enjoy it. I don't know why Matt Morgan asked for a street fight if he didn't even use any weapons. He just beat the crap out of him. Whoop de doo. We just pretty much treated it like it was a regular match. Bram was the one that used the weapons, so that made no sense. If he didn't make it a street fight, he probably could have won. That made absolutely no sense. Uh, and I don't really like both guys anyway, so I think that meant, I think that kind of made the match point. Um, um, then Ethan Carter the third or EC three for short, and Tyrus get interviewed, and EC three talks about how he's uh, gonna win the TNA World Heavyweight Championship um, at Bell to Bell, and how tonight it's about Tyrus, and Tyrus pretty much says that he's gonna take care of um, Lashley and Mister Anderson tonight. And uh, EC3 says he's going to make some changes around here once he becomes TNA World Heavyweight Champion. And um, what happens next? Um, and uh, also what happens is um, Ty, they say that one change is they're going to get rid of... Uh, they're going to get rid of uh, Jeremy Borash's comb over referring to when he shaved his head. And Jeremy Borash says that... Uh, this is uh, real hell. I thought it was uh, pretty good stuff. Good backstage segment. Then we get uh, Austin Aries versus Davey Richards. And the winner of this match gets to pick the stipulation um, in the best of five series. In match number five, uh, let me rephrase it. So the winner of this match gets to pick the stipulation in match number five of the best of five series and the tag team series between um, the Dirty Heels being Austin Aries and Bobby Roode and the Wolves, um, Eddie Edwards, and Davey Richards, which I think this match is, you know, maybe hyped for this match because I had no clue what direction they were going to go with. And this was a really good match. They start doing a lot of chain wrestling in the beginning. And then Austin Aries keeps rolling outside the win. And Davey Richards hits a big boot on him on the outside. And he tries to hit the dive on him, but Austin Aries escapes. So Davey Richards goes after him. Um, he attacks him. He actually uh, stands on top of a steel chair and just starts punching Austin Aries, which was really cool. And then uh, Davey Richards tries to dive up, hit a drop kick off the ropes, but Austin Aries knocks him off. And then he hits a uh, um, a uh, axe handle off the uh, top rope onto the floor onto Davey Richards, which was cool. And then uh, Austin Aries dominates the match for a while. Where he hits a uh, springboard senton on him. And he just dominates the match for a while, which was really cool. And then uh, Davey Richards makes his comeback. He ends up hitting a dive on the Aries. And then he hits a drop kick on him. And he makes his comeback on him. And then uh, Austin Aries hits a um, 
dive himself, drop kick himself, and then he gets uh, Davy Richards into the last chanchery, but uh, he gets the ropes, and then Davy Richards um, hits a uh, sit. Or uh, Aries goes for the hit. Um, Davy Richards hit the drop kick in the corner, and then he f- throws him up in the air and hits a k- kick to the head on him, and uh, Austin Aries kicks out of it. And then Davy Richards is in the corner. Aries hits a drop kick on him, and he goes for the brain buster, but Davy Richards hits a f- um, fall away suplex on him for f- well, not for the win, but Aries, but covers him, and Aries kicks out, and then. Um, Davy Richards hits a double stomp off the top, and Aries kicks out of it, which was really cool. And then uh, Bobby Roode runs out. Davy Richards is distracted by him, and Eddie Edwards comes out, and he fights with Roode, and then Aries rolls up Richards for the win and wins the match. And I thought that was awesome stuff. This match was awesome. I really enjoyed this match, so I thought it was good. And uh, Austin Aries picks the stipulation is going to be that um, is going for the match number five in the tag team series. And it's going to be the Dirty Heels versus the Wolves at Bell to Bell in a 30-minute Iron Man match, which was awesome. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing that match. I can't wait to see it. Um, so I think that's going to be awesome. And then Eric Young gets interviewed and says pretty much he's going to win the King of the Mountain match, um, which was okay. Uh, then we get the Dollhouse, which consists of Taryn Terrell, um, Marty Bell, and Jade. Versus Brooke and Awesome Con in a handicap match. Three on two. I didn't really enjoy this match. Reason being, it's because the pretty much the whole match is Brooke and Awesome Con destroy um, Jade and Marty Bell while Taryn Terrell watches, and then the Dollhouse gets the heat on Brooke, and then eventually Awesome Con gets the hot tag and beat the crap out of Jade and Marty Bell while Taryn Terrell watches, and then. Uh, Book wins. Um, I remember how. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I didn't really like this match. It was pointless. Um, I think they should have done a different match for the knockouts. But I think they should have done. But instead of this match, maybe have done this trip, the triple threat match that you're going to do between Taylor Two L, Book, and Awesome Khan for the knockouts title um, on this show instead of waiting until Wednesday because I think that would have delivered a lot better. Um, and then Magnus gets interviewed. And he talks about what James Storm's done to him, saying that um, he uh, he understands that James Storm is a TNA original, but he says um, that he um, himself um, has been happy to call TNA his home, and TNA's been his life, and he's dedicated six years into this company. And he talks about how he also loves his son Donovan, I think his name is, and Mickey James. And he says uh, that he just, he doesn't want to hate James Storm, but he's gonna beat the crap out of him, and the the devil catches up with him. Um, and he says the devil won't find him because he's he's inside him. Uh, I thought that was a good promo for a bad feud that I'm not enjoying, but it was still pretty good. And then we get James Storm versus Magnus, and the unsanctioned match pretty much means it's pretty much like a no holds barred match, extreme rules. Um, and um, this match was really good. Uh, Magnus and James Storm just start brawling on the outside. Um, Ma- and uh, Magnus throws Storm rib first into the guard where they fight into the crowd. And Magnus tries to um, powerbomb um, James Storm into through a table with a bunch of like food on it and stuff. And then uh, James Storm hits a back body drop and he goes through the table. And then um, they continue to fight. And uh, James Storm hits a Russian lug sweep. It, Russian lug, Russian leg sweep into the um, guardrail, which was really cool. And um, then uh, James Storm gets a beer bottle out, and he's um, about to uh, use it. But J- Josh Matthews on commentary tells him that's too far. And James Storm, that's too hard, huh? And he spits at Josh Matthews, which I thought was awesome. Um, and then Magnus attacks him. And then they fight inside the ring for a little bit. Um, then they go back on the outside. They brawl out there. Well, then they put a table in the ring. To one of them bought a table. I don't remember which one. And uh, they brawl like by the tech area. And James Storm hits Magnus with something. I didn't really get to see what it was, but it looked like it hurt. But it looked like it hurt, um, storyline wise. Um, and then they fight like at the tech area, and they keep telling them to get out because they're gonna get electrocuted. And they fight there, and Magnus kicks something, 
and then the power kind of goes out. Like they have some electrical problems, and that's going to get utilized later on in the show. And they fight back to the win. Um, they fight in the win, and James Storm uh, goes to hit the eye of the storm on the Magnus through the table. Magnus counters, hits a power bomb through the table, and James Storm kicks out of that. Um, James Storm hits a rope DDT on uh, Magnus, and uh, Magnus kicks out of that. Then James Storm gets the table out and uh, puts it outside the win. And um, he's going to put Magnus through, through it. But then uh, Magnus fights out of it. He puts Storm on it. He's just about, he jumps off the top rope about try and attempts to put Storm through the table. But Storm was out of the way and Magnus goes through the table. And Magnus kicks out of that when he tries to cover him. Um, next. And then Magnus gets out some No, James Storm gets out some salt. And Magnus counters it, and the salt goes into James Storm's face. And then he hits like a sit down rock bottom on uh, Storm. And he tries to cover Storm off it. And he has the match won, but the referee got blinded by the salt, so he didn't see it. And then after, and then uh, James Magnus tries to get the referee to, I guess, not really come to, but uh, realize what's going on, have me make him be able to see again. And then uh, James Storm hits a super kick on Magnus, and he kicks out of that. Um, and then. Um, Magnus hits a uh, back body drop and Storm tries to use his cowbell and uh, Storm kicks out of that. And then it gets ridiculous. Storm hits him off the head with a cowbell, hits two super kicks on him, and Magnus kicked out of that. That was a little bit overpowered right there. That was ridiculous. Um, and then um, Magnus continues to beat the crap out of Storm. He uh, gets a beer bottle and... Uh, is going to use it on Storm, and then Storm gets another beer bottle, and they both hit each other at the same time, and then James Storm falls on Magnus and covers him and gets the win, and that was it. That was the end of the match right there. Afterwards, everybody, they have to be helped to the back, and I uh, thought the finish was really well done. I really enjoyed that. I really hope they just end this feud, but I don't think they're going to, um, because I think if this was going to be the blow-off match, Magnus would go over here, and that's why I picked him to go over, so I think... Uh, this feud is going to continue. If it gets better, um, I'll appreciate it. If we see Mickey James ever again, I won't appreciate it because technically she should be dead since she got hit by a train. So I'm just saying. Um, or at least in a body cast or something. But since she suffered no physical damage, this makes the whole feud bullshit. Um, and that whole baby thing was pretty bad too. So then Drew Galloway gets interviewed. Um, and he talks about his match that the Ryzen, which consists of himself, Micah, and Eli Drake are going to have with the BDC, the Beatdown Clan, at Bell to Bell. They're going to have a match. And the BDC consists of MVP, Kenny Kin, Loki, and uh, Hernandez now. And they're going to have a match. And whoever loses, the stable will be... Um, let's, we'll have to, um, you know, dissolve, uh, be done... We'll have to disband. That's what I was trying to say. The, the losing stable has to disband. Um, I've, and he talks a little bit about it. It's pretty much says that this war has been going on for a while. And he's going to take out the BDC this uh, Wednesday on Impact. I kind of hope the BDC... I think the BDC just might win. Because uh, I feel like if the Ryzen wins, they'll just disband anyways. So that will make the whole match pointless. I really hope the Ryzen just wins. Because then both stables will be gone. Because I hate both stables. Um, but I think the BDC would win because if the Ryzen wins, then the match wouldn't make any sense because the whole stable would just, I feel like the, the Ryzen's only a stable to get rid of the BDC, so why not just have the BDC win, and then, you know, and they just added Hernandez in the group, I don't see him just adding a new member and then just disbanding all together, so, you know, um, and then he talks about how this is like his first pay-per-view main event ever, first main event on Impact and stuff like that, I thought that was fine. Um, he, he kind of put a good promo here. Um, then we get EC3 and Tyrus versus Mr. Anderson and Lashley. This match started off kind of, uh, one of those, like, one of those typical tag team matches you would see on TV. But then it picked up a little bit. I actually got into it. Um, EC3 and Tyrus, uh, well, the faces dominate EC3 for a while. Then behind the referee's back, Tyrus chokeslams Lashley. And they get the heat on Lashley for a while. And then Lashley gets the hot tag of Mr. Anderson. Um, Mr. Anderson um, hits all his moves on EC3, and then uh, Mr. Anderson hits the uh, spin, the uh, Rolling Thunder on him, 
I don't know what it's called. He picks them up and he spins them. Um, but I don't really know what it's called. Not an airplane spin, but you know. And then uh, he tries to do it to Tywis, but EC3 um, takes out his leg and Ty Mr. Anderson falls and Tywis lands on top of him. And then they get the heat on uh, Mr. Anderson for a while. And then um, Lashley gets the hot tag on uh, EC3. And then um, EC3 picks up uh, Lashley for a TKO, which was impressive. This is actually what got me into the match, too. I was getting into it before, but once EC3 did that, that made the match really good. Because then the match started to pick up from there. And then um, Mr. Anderson and Lashley both try to take out um, Tywis. Uh, they're both hitting him with right hands. He won't go down. And then they try to suplex Tywis. But Tywis sits a double suplex on him. And then he hits a uh, throat. He hits... He forces his thumb into Mr. Anderson's throat, and then uh, he tries to do it to Lashley, but Lashley ducks it and hits a spear on him. And then EC3 hits the uh, one percenter on Lashley for the win. Um, and then afterwards, he holds up a replica belt that somebody had in the audience, like he's going to be the next TNA World Heavyweight Champion. So I thought this was a good view. I um, I ended this this match ended up delivering. Um, and then uh, Jeff Jarrett and Karen Jarrett get interviewed and talk about how this is going to be the one final promo, one final match in TNA Wrestling. And uh, yeah, that was good stuff. And he talks about, he says he's going to be the king of the mountain. Um, so then uh, the next match, the main event, is the king of the mountain match. Drew Galloway versus, well actually let me explain what a king of the mountain match is first for those of you that don't know. Um, Kid in the Mountain match. I've seen. I've only seen one um, from 2006. I think it was from 2006 Slammiversary, and that one was good. It wasn't bet. That one I think was better than this one, but the, this one was still good. Um, pretty much what this is, it's a uh, like a ladder match kind of, but uh, instead of like getting the title, you have to put hang the title um, on the cable, and uh, you don't just get to do it though. You have to qualify for it, so you have to pin or make you, anybody in the match um, submit, and um, you can do. And it's falls count anywhere too. So, and if you get pinned or made to submit, you have to spend two minutes in the penalty box. Um, and they try to compare that to football, but that's really hockey because you know penalty box. I think hockey. Uh, I guess they they compared it to football though because. I guess they could have the fumble when they get the title. I don't know. Uh, it's more like hockey, though, because penalty box. I don't know any of the sports as the penalty box. Um, and, yeah, um, you can't – so, yeah, you have to qualify. I, I, I actually like this concept. I don't know why they got rid of it because um, this is the first one they said they did in uh, uh, six years. So it was pretty insane. Um, so let's talk about the match itself now. We get Drew Galloway versus Eric Young versus Matt Hardy uh, versus Bobby Roode versus Jeff Jarrett with Karen Jarrett in the Ken in the Mountain match. And this match was like for the Ken in the Mountain title. It was like an actual championship, which I think is cool. And I'm going to talk about what I think is going to happen with that championship because the winner, um, you know. And Jeff Jarrett got a really good reaction here. And uh, everybody starts fighting each other. Um, Roode fights with Hardy. Galloway fights with Young. And Jeff Jarrett just kind of stands there because there's no one for him to really fight. Um, and then eventually he starts going off on uh, Bobby Roode and Eric Young. And he does the Jeff Jarrett strut. And then Bobby Roode hits a roll up on him. And he gets it. So Jeff Jarrett has to go to the penalty box. And Bobby Roode qualifies to be able to um, go to the. Uh, to be able to hand the championship. Um, and the match continues. Jeff Jarrett eventually gets out of the penalty box. He tries to get back in the win. Eric Young attacks him from behind and DDTs him on the floor, pins him, and then uh, J Jarrett has to go back in the penalty box. And Eric Young qualifies to be able to hang the championship. Um, and then um, Bobby Roode and Eric Young are working together, sort of. They're just kind of attacking. They're just being heels, attacking the faces. And Drew Galloway hits a future shot DDT under Matt Hardy on a ladder, which was really cool. And then. Um, Eventually, um, Matt Hardy hits a twist of fate on Wood and, and uh, pins him. And, Eric, and uh, Galloway rolls up Eric Young and um, gets the pinfall. So Wood and Eric Young both have to go into the uh, penalty box together. 
And um, they both get in there and they're trying to work out a strategy. So more gets done with this. And then uh, Galloway and Hardy are both fighting on the ladder. And Jeff Jarrett tips it over and he hits the strut on um, I think Matt Hardy. And he tries to cover him, but Gallo No, he hits a stutter, strut on Galloway, but he hits the stroke, and not the strut. The stroke on uh, Ga um, Ga Galloway, but Hardy breaks up the pinfall. And then um, he hits the stroke on uh, Hardy. And then uh, Rude, and Aries, Rude and Yun come back in the match, and they start working together. They uh, double team everybody, take them out. And then they do the team cannon to thin. And then. Um, they all uh, start fu they then they, they start fighting and then um what happens next um Hardy and Galloway both hit in and they do the uh you know the power bomb into the suplex spot um and then uh before Jarrett can pin them Wood and Yun pin them so they have to go in the penalty box Hardy and Galloway and this was really cool I was wondering why they did this at first I thought you couldn't Get it pin I thought like once you qualified you couldn't pin anybody anymore, but I guess you can. But I think they also did this because the people that were actually in the match were Jeff Jarrett, Eric Young, and Bobby Roode. And these are like the three TNA originals. These are the pe Jeff Jarrett created TNA, and Bobby Roode and Eric Young have been in there from the beginning. So I thought this was really cool. And they all start they also fighting with each other. Eric Young gets the upper hand of it, and he gets Jeff Jarrett's guitar that he comes out with, and he's gonna hit um Jeff Jarrett with it, but Je Eric Young Jarrett low blows him, and then he hits Bobby Wu with the guitar, covers him, and uh, Jarrett qualifies to be able to hand the championship, and Wu has to go in the penalty box, and then um, everybody starts fighting. The uh, ladder gets wedged um, in the guard wheel in the apron, and Eric Young Jarrett tries to hit the stroke on uh, Eric Young onto that ladder, but then Eric Young hits a power driver on a Jarrett while he's on the ladder, and then. Um, Wu gets out of the penalty box, starts fighting with everybody. Drew Galloway dives off the penalty block. He has a flip. He has a somersault um, off of it onto everybody, but Jeff Jarrett because he was down. Then he tries to get up and win the championship. And um, Hardy and G Galloway start fighting, and uh, Eric Young uses the ladder, but the ladder falls before that happens. So it was really funny. Um, then uh, Bobby Wu gets up, climbs up the ladder. And then uh, Eric Young sets up another ladder, hits Bobby Wu with the championship, and then Jared hits the stroke on the, um, Eric Young, climbs up the ladder, puts the title on there, wins the match, and he's the glo and he is the uh, King of the Mountain champion. And uh, I'm actually one so I'm wondering if this is just like going to be a one time thing because Jeff Jarrett isn't in TNA, he's in Global Force Wrestling, so I don't know what this is, means. You know, if this just this title was just a one time thing. And they just wanted to give Jeff Jarrett that accolade, so I'm not really sure. Um, and this match was really good. This was probably for me was the match of the night. I was into this match the most. I had no clue who was going to win. I had a feeling Jeff Jarrett was going to win, but I wasn't sure just because of the whole title concept. Um, so we're probably going to find out about that on Impact, I think. You know, he'll probably come out one last time, give like a speech or something. And I just wonder what this means for, you know, Global Force Wrestling and TNA. I wonder. If now that TNA is gonna go under, maybe Jeff Jarrett will pick them up and he'll put and uh, he'll make like a, spe a separate like kind of brand thing, um, and uh, he'll there'll be like a separate TV show. He'll try to find a network for him. Maybe they can go on Jeff Jarrett's network as like a separate TV show. And TNA still um, like it's owned by everybody else, but it's under Jeff Jarrett's promotion or something like that. I'm wondering if that's gonna happen. So. A lot of good things. If Global Force Wrestling and TNA can come together, we can see, you know, something good here. I'm just I'm curious. Because um, I really would not... I Like I said, even though I trash TNA from time to time, I really don't want to see it go under. Because uh, I, uh, I am a TNA fan. I'm not like a big TNA fan or anything, but I am a TNA fan. It is another wrestling company. It's another good storyline. I really don't want to see TNA go under, and I think that would save TNA from going under. Um, and maybe like the roster, because the roster isn't the best. Um, so maybe the roster would kind of upgrade, because then uh, maybe some people that go over to Global Force Wrestling will wrestle on TNA too. So maybe that would help the roster. So I, I'm wondering what's going to happen you know, with this whole Jeff Jarrett thing. So, 
I'm going to have to wait and see. But other than that, that's pretty much it, guys. That's my review of TNA Slam Anniversary 2015. Overall, by the way, I think um, this pay-per-view um, I thought was solid. I didn't think it was like a great pay-per-view, but I thought it was a pretty good pay-per-view. Um, I like the Magnus Storm match. I like the main event, the King of the Mountain match. I like the Aries Rich Davy Richards match. I like the opening X Division um, Championship match, and I like the tag team match. There was another match I liked on this show. Um, no, there wasn't. But uh, okay, I'll say. But I, it was a good pay per view though, just because uh, there was like a lot of good stuff on it. Um, you know, so I thought it was a pretty good pay per view. You know, it, it's not like a pay per view you want to watch. It's an easy, it is a nice easy sit through. It gets a little bit boring at times, but it is a pretty good pay per view. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much it, guys. I am. You can click down there to subscribe, and if you want to leave your thoughts and comments about what you thought of this pay per view, feel free to do so. And that's pretty much it, guys. See you later.